Good evening. So I am Goldberg, who lives in Great Neck and is a lawyer. <laughs> so I pretty much check every box on the official Long Island scorecard of Jewish stereotypes. <laughs> I would think that the only one who could beat me would be a cardiologist from Roslyn. <laughs> Um, I am by far the oldest person you'll see performing tonight. I am 69 years old this night. You should really not applaud for that because for me it's just an age and not an interactive experience. Used to be, but that's a long time ago. So I lied, I'm not really a lawyer. I am now a retired lawyer. After 40 some odd years, I finally got to the point in my life where my time would be my own. I would have no deadlines. I would have no stress. I could sleep as late as I want. And then we decided to get a dog. <laughs> well, I wanted a doodle dog. They don't shed, they're hypoallergenic. This is when a poodle mates with any other breed of dog. It seems that poodles have become the gods and goddesses of sex in the canine world. You have golden doodles, you have labradoodles, and now they have pit bull a doodles for poodles who like it rough. <laughs> Well, there would be no designer dog for us. No, we connected with a group that rescues Labrador Retrievers from the Deep South. Now, in my mind, anything below Atlantic City is the Deep South. But these people actually go to Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi and rescue dogs from five-day kill shelters. The dog we got was from Opelousas, Louisiana, which, and I looked this up, is the poorest county in the second poorest state in America. This is a place where I have to believe that the people would be thrilled if we would adopt them. <laughs> so you would think that it would be easy you know, to adopt a dog under such circumstances. But you would be wrong, because people who rescue dogs are fucking fanatics as to who they give the dog to. So if you get past the 15-page application, the three letters of reference from people who have known you for 20 years and have a dog themselves, and the one-hour telephone interview, they will schedule you for a home visit. <laughs> a home visit. They want to come to my home, where I live, where I raise children, which I consider to be my castle, to see if it's good enough for a homeless dog from death row in possibly the worst fucking place in America. So two people appear at our door, they are very serious, they don't smile, they are on a mission from God. They invade my home, they explore every inch they need, leave no stone unturned. At one point I see them pacing off the size of my living room. I, I said, excuse me, but is this dog bringing furniture? <laughs> A few minutes later, they asked me, what do you plan to feed the dog? Oh, I said, I don't know, maybe you can help me. What did he order when he was on death row in Louisiana? Because whatever it is, I'll give it to him every day. So despite my uh, bad attitude, they approved us. And there's one final step. You have to sign a contract agreeing to give the dog a forever home. 
don't even have a forever home. My wife has me on a week-to-week -week tenancy. I keep a go bag by the front door. I know every desk clerk at Motel 6, they leave the light on for me. So, uh, although people my age don't like to say this, I think my time will soon be up. I just want to note, and this is true, that while I was in the back room with the other comedians, four of them called me sir, and three of them offered to help me up on the bar stool. It's very embarrassing to be the oldest person in the room. So, uh, thank you for listening. And there's a lot of funny people coming. Thank you. Stan Goldberg. Goldberg.